We're moving on to adding and subtracting fractions. These are the steps for adding or subtracting fractions. First, you need to make sure that the denominators are the same in both of the fractions. Then you need to go ahead and add and subtract the numerators. Remember, the numerators are the top numbers. Third, you place the sum or difference from the numerators in the numerator of your answer, and the denominator will stay the same. Lastly, you want to check and make sure that your answer is in simplest form. Here are a few examples to go through. First step one, we need to check and make sure our denominators are the same. We're looking at four-fifths minus one-fifth. We have five in the denominator for both fractions, so they're the same. We move on to step two. Step two says to add or subtract the numerators. We're going to subtract because we have a subtraction sign here. Four minus one is three. Step three says to put our difference in the numerator of our answer and to keep our denominator the same. Our last step is to check to see if our answer is in simplest form. Three-fifths, is it in simplest form? Yes, it is. So we can move on. Our next problem, one-third plus three-eighths. We start with step one, check to make sure the denominators are the same. They are not the same, so we need to find a common denominator. The best way to do this is to look for the least common multiple. So the multiples of three are three, six, nine, twelve, 15, 18, 21, 24. And the multiples of 8 are 8, 16, 24. Our least common multi multiple will be 24. So the denominator for both of our fractions will come out to be 24. And we need to create equivalent fractions. You should remember to do this, that we have to either multiply or divide by the, same numer by the same number for the numerator and the denominator. So if we look, how did we change 3 to 24? 3 had to be multiplied by 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. Had to be multiplied by 8. So we need to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by 8. 1 times 8 is 8. That becomes our numerator. 3 times 8 is 24, and that's our denominator. Now we go, say, go through the same process for the second fraction. 8 times what number equals 24? 8 times 3. So we need to multiply both the numerator and the denominator by 3. 3 times 3 is 9, that's our numerator. 8 times 3 is 24, that's our denominator. Now we have our problem set up so that we have like denominators. We can go ahead and go to step 2. Step 2 says to add or subtract the numerators. 8 plus 9 is 17. Step 3 tells us to put our sum in the numerator, and the denominator will stay the same. Step 4 tells us to check and see if our answer is in simplest form. Yes, it is. Here's our third example, 5 sixths minus 1 half. Step 1 says to make sure the denominators are the same. They are not, so we must find the least common multiple. Multiples of, of 2 are 2, 4, 6. 6 is the number that, that our other, of our other denominator, so we can stop right there, and we know that 6 is going to be our least common multiple. So we're going to put 6 in the denominator of both fractions, and we're going to go back and create our equivalent fractions. 6 stayed the same, so the numerator of that fraction will also stay the same. On our second fraction, 2 times what number equals 6? 2 times 1, 2, 3. So we have to multiply the numerator by 3 also. 1 times 3 is 3. 2 times 3 is 6. That's our denominator. Now we can go on to step 2. Step 2 says to, to subtract the numerators. 5 minus 3. 5 minus 3 equals 2. In step 3, it tells us to put the difference in the numerator. 5 minus 3 is 2. And to keep our denominator the same. Step 4 asks us, asks us to make sure that our answer is in simplest form. Is 2 6 in simplest form? No, it's not, because both of these are even numbers. We can divide them both by 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. 6 divided by 2 is 3. So our answer in simplest form is 1 third. Okay, the last thing we're going to look at is adding and subtracting mixed numbers. Adding and subtracting mixed numbers has a couple of different methods for, for doing it. However, the easiest method is to change the mixed numbers into improper fractions and then go ahead and follow the steps that we were just following for adding and subtracting fractions. So here are a couple of examples. Remember, the first thing we want to do is change our mixed number into an improper fraction. We do that by multiplying the whole number 
by the denominator and then adding the numerator. 2 times 5 is 10, plus 2 is 12, so we have 12 for our numerator. We keep our denominator the same. We bring down our addition sign and we need to change the second mixed number. 1 times 5 is 5, plus 4 is 9, 9 is our numerator, our denominator stays the same. Now we go ahead and follow our rules. We check to see if our denominators are the same, which they are. Since they are the same, we can go ahead and add the numerators. 12 plus 9 gives us 21. 21 is our numerator. Our denominator stays the same with 5. Now we need to switch our, our improper fraction back into a mixed number for our answer. So we take 21 divided by 5. 5 will go into 21 four times. 4 times 5 is 20. We have 1 left over when we subtract. So our answer is 4 and 1 fifth. Our second example is 9 and 5 6 minus 3 and a half. We'll go ahead and switch our mixed numbers into improper fraction. 9 times 6 is 54, plus 5 is 59. So we have 59 over 6. We bring down our subtraction sign. We switch our second mixed number. 3 times 2 is 6, plus 1 is 7, and our denominator is 2. Now we go to our, we go to our steps for adding and subtracting fractions. We check the denominators. They're not the same. We know by the multiples for 2, 2, 4, 6, that 6 is going to be our common denominator. 6 stayed the same on this fraction, so the 59 will also stay the same. 2 times 3 equals 6. So we need to multiply both the numerator and denominator by 3. 7 times 3 is 21. And 2 times 3 is 6. So we have our fractions switched into improper fractions. Now we can go ahead and subtract. 59 minus 21 is 38. And our denominator stays the same. And then we need to switch it back into a mixed number to get our final answer. 6 can go into 38 six times. Six times six is 36, which gives us two leftovers, which gives us the fraction two six. Two six is not in simplest form. It needs to be reduced to one third. And that's our final answer, six and one third.